While I'm waiting on parts for the other units, I've decided to move on to this. This was top of the line in 1989 and 1990. It's a Yamaha RX1100 receiver. It's got a lot of neat stuff on it. A pretty uh, nice tuner. I can change the IF uh, width. I can do fine tuning. It's got a decent uh, input selector system on it. Big knobs. A lot of control in the preamp. It's probably, you can hook up uh, three sets of speakers to it. Although B and C are run in series and not parallel, of course. You got a three band tone control. Some sort of simulated stereo. I don't know what DNC does. I haven't read the manual to this unit yet. Some sort of video enhancer gizmo. It's an early AV receiver. There is no surround sound, it's just straight big power stereo. Unfortunately, we're not going to have big power until we figure out why we've got a big short. We've got a fuse that's blown to heck. Now, I have, I have done some testing on this unit. The caps are okay, the rectifier seems to be okay. The output transistors, however, are definitely not healthy. Um, you can tell that just by the fact that we've got a very blown up cap and some burned resistors there. Some of the emitter resistors have actually burned to the point where they're actually burned open and burned in two. It takes a lot to do that to a metal oxide resistor. A lot. You get some burns and some soot in this area here. So that tells me that we've probably also lost the drive stage. That's not good. Hopefully it didn't burn all the way back to the preamp. That would be a real pain in the butt. Power supply caps are 12,000 microfarad, 71 volts. I'm not sure what this 4700 at 80 volt cap is for. I'm not sure what type of power supply that's running. It is interesting. Um, I'm just not quite sure on that. Anyway, it's kind of a borderline case. It's black. It's not the prettiest piece of equipment. I've got to fix a, a bracket there. So, I mean, on one hand you might think, eh, big power receiver worth it all the time, but yeah, sometimes you've got to ask yourself, is it really worth it? I happen to be able to repair these fairly quickly and fairly easily. Um, so I'm thinking yes. I may not be able to uh, find a buyer for it until I repair that though. That uh, needs to get fixed. I can probably go down to the makerspace and get, get one of those printed though and make this thing as good as new. Uh, it's about 120, maybe 125 watts at some ridiculously low distortion, though, so it's definitely a nice unit and worth some attention of the shop. I've already unsoldered the output transistors in preparation to test them. I believe this is where we will find our fault. A burned resistor like that usually happens if you get one side of the amp blown up, like either one NPN or PNP section blown up. You usually will just get a blown mains fuse if both blow out at the same time. If you get a blown mains fuse and a burned resistor, you've either got a crowbar circuit, which this does not have, or you have a uh, case where one transistor pair short, one side of the pair shorts, and then shortly after the other one goes. That was what happened to the old Techniques 8077, by the way. So, I'm suspecting I'm going to find both PNP, PNP and uh, NPN shorted. Green is PNP, the black are NPN. So, let's grab the DCA Pro here. I'm not going to bother with multimeter tests. I'm just going to use the DCA Pro because it's faster. So, grab our DCA Pro here and connect the leads to the transistors here. Mind you, the transistors must be unsoldered from the unit. 
uh, to test or you will get inconclusive and possibly erroneous results. Okay, that one's good. So that's one good, at least. Let's move on to the next P and P transistor. This one is for the right channel, I believe. Okay. Let's grab our tester. Yeah, that won't do. That transistor is bad. Let me verify that the leads are connected properly. They are. That transistor is shorted. Move on to this next one. Wow, all leads shorted. Well, that one's just blown to hell. Probably turned into a blob inside there. Man, got some damage on this unit tonight, that's for sure. Wow. This isn't the most violent output stage failure I've seen, but it is the most violent one of the year so far. Hopefully somebody will provide me with one that actually caught on fire. Those are always fun. They're not very profitable, though, because you can't fix them. Well, you can't fix them economically, in most cases. Well, we got one more that's good. Interesting. But yeah, we've got an NPN and PNP, or a NPN and PNP pair that have shorted. That alone is enough to blow the mains fuse. So we've definitely found a culprit, if not the culprit. I suspect, though, because we haven't yet gone onto the channel that blew the resistors to Kingdom Come, that it's not the only fault. Okay. Yeah, another dead one. No surprise there. No surprise. Like I said, both channels are out. Alright. Connect these leads up. Dead. Again. And I'm not surprised. Again, just not surprised one bit them seeing these kind of failures yep and another one bites the dust I'm going to use uh, the TO3P packaged ver variant of the 2SC5200 and its complement, which I believe is the A1943. I'll have to get back to you on that part number. Um, I would use the TO264, but finding insulators for TO264 is oddly difficult. And another one that's just completely blown to hell, just to, turned into a blob. Anyway, we've definitely found the problem. Uh, it's got a melted down output stage, and it, on at least one channel, a melted down driver stage, which is unfortunate. So it means I have to buy more parts. There's actually nothing blown up down here. This is just heat stress, typical of locations where there's a linear regulator. You'll note some solder joints that are looking a little sad because of thermal cycling. Those will be redone. I'll suck up all the old solder because the uh, cracked area oxidizes and then I'll re-solder it and it'll be good to go for another 20 years. But uh, other than the output stage and that front panel thing and at least one drive stage, that's pretty much all that's wrong with it. There's nothing else that's irreplaceable that's blown up so the power transformer is good things that you can't economically replace are good the control system is probably good because that's on a different circuit entirely and this uh, regulator that feeds it is checking out okay on the meter 
So I think I'm going to go ahead and attempt to repair this and uh, use it as the shop stereo in my new shop that I'm moving to in May. Uh, I'm getting a little upgrade from this tiny 9 by 11 bedroom that I run my shop from. It's a bit crammed. Uh, I'm going to get actually a room that's dedicated for this, so that's going to be really, really nice. And that room is going to need a stereo, because I need my tunes while I work. Anyway, let's check out the back. I've got a ton of speaker connections, as I outlined. You can have three sets. It does have world power, 110, 120, 240, and 220 volts. It's currently set for 120, of course, because I'm in the United States. I'm gonna, let me turn off the light there. There we go. Much better. I'm gonna, pre and main are separable. It tells you what kind of speakers you need. Let me tilt that so you can see it. You got uh, 6 ohms minimum on the mains. This uh, unit is definitely a higher voltage unit. It doesn't like 4 ohm speakers. Uh, the transistors I'm putting in here are higher current rated. It will probably operate with 4 ohm speakers after I modify it. Uh, no huge guarantees there. The 3 ohms minimum is for speakers on the B and C, which are wired in series, and that will result in a 6 ohm load. Got a uh, remote control facility for a Yamaha cassette deck, some video signal switching and rudimentary processing. Nobody cares about that these days though, it's just composite video. And compared to anything HD or even S video, it looks like trash, so this really is not an AV receiver in the sense of the modern word at all. You would not use uh, this as an AV receiver unless, unless you just had like a bunch of old video game consoles or something. Which that would definitely work great for. The soldering up here is all quite good. Uh, nothing really wrong. Like I said, all the flux is pretty evenly distributed, although there is quite a lot of it on the board. It's evenly distributed and not going to cause any trouble. So I, I think it's going to be repairable. It's just going to be a bit of a troublesome job because I've got to replace all of those transistors. The ones, the two that are remaining are probably stressed beyond all imagination, probably just moments from failure, so they're going in the trash can too. And the, the transistors are actually going to be upgraded from what they were, and they should end up with a much more robust and possibly even more linear amplifier. That's a wrap on this guy until I get parts in. I'm going to get some transistors in tomorrow and some caps, but I think I'm going to have to scrounge up some stuff for the drive stage. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out suitable substitutes for those. They're medium current, high voltage, and high frequency. They have a transition frequency of 100 megahertz. So it's like a, tr it's kind of like a small signal transistor, except that it handles one and a half amps instead of milliamps. So it is a rather special transistor I'm gonna, that I don't have in stock at the moment, so I'm going to have to find that. I'll uh, update you as soon as the parts come in and I restart this project.